Hey everybody, we've got a beast to look at today. It's a big old Sanyo dual lamp DLP. It's a uh, PDG DHT 100L, a uh, beast of a projector, 6500 lumen, something like that. These are usually used in large auditoriums where you need, you know, a long throw setup. It's got a lens the size of a coffee can. And the uh, jack panel here, you can actually remove these modules and put different ones in. So you can see it's got HDMI, DVI, VGA, RGB, HV, serial port in and out, so you can gang these together. Uh, all sorts of stuff, you know, service port. It's a nice projector. Uh, it actually works. It turns on. It's got a picture and everything, but it is dirty. It's been in a uh, auditorium, uh, conference hall kind of place for a while, and uh, they recently updated, and we're going to throw this in the trash. So uh, fortunately, it's known that I like to grab scrap units from people, so I grabbed this one, and they had told me that it actually had a uh, lamp problem. But it didn't have a lamp problem, it had a lamp timer problem. Apparently the lamps inside did not have properly programmed timer chips. So I pulled them out and I reprogrammed to make sure, popped them back in and came up without a problem. So what I want to do in this video is uh, show you how to do routine maintenance on one of these. So the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to spin it around and we'll take the, uh, the lens out because I don't want to deal with the weight of the lens as I move the projector around. This projector already weighs a ton, so we're going to push the uh, lens release button, and then we're going to turn this counterclockwise a little bit until it releases. You can hear it. Slide it straight out, and you can see the size of that thing. There's the uh, part number. Bring it a little closer for you. And just for the fun of it, let's see. Eh, it was worth a shot. This way, maybe? Nothing. <laughs> anyway, set that off to the side and just put a uh, wipe over it to keep that lens clean. That makes this thing so much lighter to move around, but you also can now see the dirt. And this is what I saw when I first came up on it was all that. And it's not terrible. This thing's probably been in use for five or six years, maybe even seven years. Never had any routine maintenance done. So that taken into account. It's really not too bad, but we're going to pop the top off and make sure that we get everything clean because I think after I use this a little bit, I'm going to put it up for sale because it really needs to be used. There's a filter with the filter cartridge. All right. Now... Panasonic bought Sanyo, so they actually use these same kind of cartridges. Let me take that door out. You don't normally have to take this all the way off, but I want to. And this is the filter cartridge. This element is on a spool. It's kind of like a uh, old film cartridge. And these things move it back and forth. Now, that's kind of dirty. I'm going to blow that out for the time being, you know, when we go through and do all the cleaning. Um, but there's no need to replace this yet. In fact, what you can do sometimes is even pop these open, clean them, roll it back up, and start the whole thing over instead of paying $130 or whatever these things cost. Now, the uh, when it's in there, it hits that little switch. 
So if you ever, you can't run these really without a filter. I mean, you could, you could trick it, you know, jam something in there and then put the door on, but you want that filter that protects your optics and everything. And you can see what I suspect is an I squared C temperature sensor right there. So let's get the lamps out next. To get the lamps out, there's a single screw on the back. This slides back about an inch and then it hinges up. And then there are lamps and color wheel. And also more evidence of dirt and dust. So let's pop these lamps out. Like I said, these are POA LMP 130s. There's also a Sanyo number, uh, 610-343-5336, but that's a POA LMP-130. Same thing. And then they just pull straight up. You can see these have that coated lens. And then the uh, timer board goes in there. So I'll put those off to the side. Now the color wheel is also replaceable without fully disassembling the projector, which is kind of cool. You just loosen three screws and this whole thing pops out. See, there's the color wheel. And all the uh, electric connections for it. And they, uh, there's your part number in case you need one. I'm going to take these out because I don't want them to get damaged while I'm rooting around in here. And I'm also going to clean them off. All right, then let's see, I guess we'll take the top off. Now, there's two screws in the front hidden under these little rubber caps. So I'm gonna open those, get my screw bin ready. Then we'll open the lamp thing back up, lamp cover. Let's get you guys a better view. There we go, just so it doesn't slam. There we are, and no wires on there. There's the underside. And here's the manufacturing info, polycarbonate. Looks like it was February of 09. Probably released in March of 09. And it was made by Tico Kukuman Company Limited. I don't know quite what that says there. But now you can see it and you can figure out what it says. And now we're inside. And it's a beast. Some spider webs. Nothing too bad. It really isn't too bad. It's just it hasn't been maintained. 
it just needs a general just dusting here's the uh, the door switch if this doesn't shut the uh, power stays off to the whole unit very obviously Sanyo inside they always use these color-coded uh, connectors for fans and stuff at least they used to back when the stuff was being built I think Christy buys these and then or bought these and then would strip them down to the guts and then put them in their own housing and then flash the software assume that's it right there that's some of the software at least that's something that's a uh, what do you call it NVRAM of some sort got a Sony chip TH fine don't know what that is but this thing's just nice you know it's really well built it's a good projector optics are really solid so let me get the uh, air compressor and get all this uh, dust cleaned out and then I'll bring you back so you can see how it went All right, so it is clean, 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 clean. Got it all out. Fans were pretty dirty. A little bit of surface dust on things. I'm gonna wipe it out with a uh, the cloth first before I put the cover on. But I do see the heat sink for the DLP module down underneath there. You can kind of see that little copper bar that goes into the heat sink. It has a, a CPU type heat sink for cooling down part of the uh, the optic setup this is where the lamps go they go in there and then their light shines into the color wheels and then in through that little there you go you can see it better through this piece of glass right here and conversely that piece of glass and then those are where it feeds into the rest of the projector as far as I know that's what it seems like at least if anybody knows different please say so but that would essentially be the light tunnel for this model uh, I do need to wipe out the inside of that I did blow the loose dust off in the cobwebs but I need to wipe the uh, plastic down but aside from that it's uh, essentially ready to go back together uh, I was starting to take the filter apart because I'm gonna reset the filter you can see I cleaned all the surface dust off it and it turned out pretty well so I'm going to disassemble this filter and then I'll show you how to reset it. All right, so I got the filter apart, so you can see here. 
and I was going to roll it back, but apparently this filter is fairly new because that's it. Oops, sorry, that's it right there. So I uh, didn't need to do that. I wasn't sure if the filter counter was right or not. It said 148 hours, so that made me think that maybe somebody had reset it and just kept running it. Because you can do that. You can reset the timer inside the projector and then just keep running the filter. But um, apparently this one was still pretty fresh. So either way, I'm glad I cleaned out the, uh, the surface dust. And I'm just going to get that tensioned so that I can snap this back on. And uh, then we'll pop it back in. There we go. There we go. There we go. That's back in. All right. I'm just going to wipe all that surface dust off and that will keep it from being drawn in in the future all right it's looking good to me I'm gonna clean the color wheels so they will go back in now I'm going to tighten these by hand so I don't strip out the uh, threads. Now, let's put the top on.
lastly, that's all installed. So, cover. All right. So now I have to put the lens back in. Before I can test it. What I have to do, what I have to do is get, make sure I line up the uh, connectors with those connections. So I should be able to There we go. Lenses in. What is that? Is that tape? Yeah, there's some tape gunge on there. I'll hit that with some goop, goop off at some point. But for now, I'm happy with this. Let's, uh, Let's get it hooked up and ready to try. All right, so I moved it over to my long throw test area. Get some power. Kick the uh, main power on. All right, so. Now it's coming on. And then this is gonna give us a blue screen. Let's bring the menu up so you can see. There we go. So, don't recall there being a test pattern on this either. There might be. Let's see, tint. Auto picture control, brilliant color, green, blue, offset, sharpness, gamma, noise, print. nothing. Normal, okay, that's projection, language, display, control, picture, picture, edge blending. Now, Ooh, test pattern. Select. Ooh, I like that. Let's see, let's go with color. Color bars, I like it. Looks good. Now that rolling that you are seeing right there, that is the synchronization of my camera shutter and the color wheels. That's not actually what you see with your eyes. Let's see, gradation one, that's all gray. Two, from right to left, looking good. Top to bottom. Now it is not level, I don't have it leveled. Or actually the screen's not level, technically. But we're just checking the picture quality here. This is a good one, all white, because now I can see if there's any um, dirt or dust, and there's none black we should essentially have nothing which we do cross hatch yep looks good there's the other side I'm zoomed out a little bit far for the screen and color bars that's pretty good so uh, I'm happy with this if uh, if you end up with one of these I'll tell you it's a great projector One thing I really like is it has the um, the light under here, the LEDs to light up your jack panel, which is kind of cool. So let's shut her down. And I'm going to just give it a wipe down, and I'll be testing it uh, probably tomorrow. I'll run it for about eight hours. So I'm thinking about selling this one. I would love to keep it, but I just don't have a use for a long throw 
super high lumen projector. I, I wish I did, honestly, because it's a fantastic projector. It has HDMI and all the other inputs, networkable. I mean, I might try to use it or use it at least until I sell it, but uh, I don't know. If, uh, if I do put it up for sale, there'll be a link in the description. Feel free to follow that link if you want it or just, you know, message me. I'm going to give this outside another wipe down and try and get some of this. Uh, looks like they got some paint on it, maybe from the hush box it was in. But, you know, it's not going to affect the operation. But the lamps are good. They're new. Um, the uh, picture uh, will look great on it. So, yeah. yeah. If you have any questions, you know where to put them. And if you don't subscribe, think about hitting that subscribe button. And as always, thank you for watching.